Our lesson for today is all about reproductive system in plants. This lesson is intended to describe the plant reproductive system responsible for the process, especially sexual reproduction. Like animals, plants are also capable of reproduction. They reproduce in many ways. In general, Plants exhibits both sexual new plants can be produced through seeds and different parts, such as stem, leaves and roots. These are the reasons why you can see plant anywhere, especially in the forest where they get good physical condition. Let's do learning task number one. Study the picture. Name the plant, and identify the part of the plant for reproduction. Malunggay or horseradish is a common plant found anywhere in the community. It has a lot of health benefits. Based on different studies, its parts are used for medicinal purposes. Let's answer the questions. Question number one. Which part of malunggay plant is used to reproduce its kind? It is the stem and seed are used to reproduce. Question number two. What part of plant seed are developed? The seed developed from the flower. Talking about the flower. Flower is an accessory organ of the plants used in sexual reproduction. It can be classified as complete and incomplete flower. The flower is said to be complete when it has both male and female reproductive part. On the other hand, it is incomplete when it has only one reproductive part, either male or female. Let's watch the video in order for us to understand the different parts and functions of a flower. Flowers are the reproductive structure of the plant. In a flower, the male sex organ is called the stamen and the female sex organ is called the pistil. But how does this process of sexual reproduction occur? Let's try and understand it. But before that, let's have a look at the typical structure of a flower. It appears somewhat like this. A flower has mainly two components. Now what do we mean by this? Every flower is mainly composed of two parts. They are the essential and the non-essential parts. Do we know what these are? The parts of a flower such as the stamen and the pistil, which are the reproductive parts, are the essential parts. Their function says it all. These are essential because they are directly involved in the process of reproduction. Do we mean that if these structures are not present, then a plant will not be able to reproduce? Yes, that's absolutely correct. So how will the plant be able to reproduce if the gamete producing structures are not present? And what are the other parts then? Floral parts such as the petals and sepals are the next in our list and they are the non-essential parts of a flower. These floral parts do not take part in the process of reproduction directly and are therefore called the non-essential parts. Now let's discuss each part in detail. To begin with, we have the stamen which is the male part. What does the stamen look like? If we zoom in the structure, it looks like this. Stamen has two distinct parts, the anther and the filament. Do you think that these structures have 
have specific functions to perform? Yes, as a matter of fact, they do. The part called the anther bears minute round bodies called pollen grains which play an active role in reproduction. There is a specific process by which pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the female part of the same or different flower. Now, what is that part called? For that, we need to focus onto our next floral part, the pistil, which is the female part. The pistil has three distinct subparts. And what are these subparts? They are the stigma, style and the ovary. Do these structures have specific functions? Yes, they do. The part called stigma is the landing place for the pollen. And what exactly do we mean by this? Pollen from the male part, the anther, land on the stigma and germinate further. This process is what we call pollination in plants. Next comes the style, which is a slender stalk that holds up the stigma in position and connects it with the ovary. What about the ovary then? It is the swollen basal part of the pistil which contains the ovules. But what are ovules and what is their function? Ovules are the female gametes that get fertilized and form the embryo. Is this process really so simple? Well, it's not as simple as it seems. The process is quite complicated. This was just an overview. Let us get into more details of the process of fertilization in the next video. Let's do learning task number 2. Learning task number 2. Study the figure and label the parts of a flower. Let's do learning task number 2. Compare and contrast the two types of pollination. Use the illustration to answer the question found in the boxes. In what part of the flower are pollen grain located? Answer. Answer. In what part of the flower pollen grains are transferred during pollination? Answer. Stigma. How many plants are involved in the process? Answer. Only one plant is needed in the process. Compare and contrast the two types of pollination. Use the illustration to answer the question found in the boxes. In what part of the flower are pollen grain located? Answer. Answer in the first plant. In what part of the flower pollen grains are transferred during pollination? Answer. Stigma in the second plant. How many plants are involved in the process? Answer. Two plants are needed in the process. Self-pollination is happens when the pollen grain are transferred from anther to the stigma of the same flower, while cross-pollination is a process that requires two individual plants of the same species. The transfer of pollen grains from flower A to B is called self-pollination. The transfer of pollen grains from flower B to C is called cross-pollination. That concludes our lesson for today. See you again next time. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to this channel for more updates.